When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. This song has a beautiful piano part full of these great arpeggios. Hey, it's Nate, and today I'm going to be teaching You'll Never Walk Alone by Jerry and the Pacemakers. All of the chords in this song are just these root position triads, and you do the arpeggio with those three notes and then a note an octave above the root. So if you find that the arpeggio is too difficult, you can just take the triads as I go over them and just block out the chords and play the song like that. When you walk through a storm. Either way, the chords and lyrics chart is gonna be really helpful because while the chords are simple, there's a lot of them. So you can grab that with the link below. But I'm just gonna cruise right ahead with the full arpeggio. Let's learn it on a C major chord, the first chord of the song. The notes of that chord are C, E, and G. This is middle C. Normally I might play it like this, but I'm gonna use one, two, and three to free up my pinky to hit that treble C an octave higher in the arpeggio. Now, if this is a big stretch for your hand, don't worry, we don't need to play all those notes at the same time. We're gonna use a nice flexible wrist to pivot between the notes from high to low and follow the arpeggio. Try this, grab your right wrist with your left hand so it doesn't move and then just pivot your right hand back and forth like this in a horizontal plane. That's the movement we want. We want that fluidity so as we go up and down, it can be nice and loose. And as you can see, that arpeggio is just skipping from low to high, turning around and coming back down. That whole pattern has six notes in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can just repeat it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just try that really slow until you get the hang of it. And that's gonna be the basis for all of our right hand playing in the song. So here are the chords for the verse. And before we go any further, we should talk about the time signature, which is a little bit unusual. The song is in 12-8 time. So you can count it in a faster 6-8 time, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or you can feel it in a slower 4-4 four, four pulse, like 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's useful to be able to hold both of those in your mind at the same time. I know it sounds tricky, but I'll break it down and you'll get used to it pretty quick. Each one of these measures gets two passes through the arpeggio. And we start with two measures of C. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So four up and down total. Then we're going to move to a G chord. That's G, B, and D. And of course, we're also going to hit that high G octave up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, for the second measure of G. As I play, I'm feeling that slower 4-4 four, four pulse. You can hang those one, two, three, four counts on the bottom note and the top notes of the arpeggio. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, going to the G. Hold your head up high. And one more time, I just want to mention that easier version where you don't play the arpeggio, you just play the bottom part with the triad like this. If you do that, you can just play on each of those slower 4-4 four, four counts per measure and you can just add bass notes in the left hand for each chord. Head up high. Okay, cool, let's keep going. I'm gonna start going a little faster now as we work our way through all these chords. And throughout this whole song, I'm gonna play octaves in my left hand. If we're doing a C chord, an octave lower and an octave lower than that, I'm gonna be just hitting and holding bass notes with my left hand. Easiest way is to just hit it at the beginning of every measure. Now, this is really important and it's useful to just make note of it. In terms of the octaves, as you can see, we're doing all these chords here. We got a B flat, we got a D minor. In terms of the right hand root, it's all gonna fall between this middle C 
and this treble C. The highest you're actually going to go is going to be this B flat chord coming up. So that's useful to know, otherwise you might find yourself going up to this high D minor or you might find yourself really high or really low. It's all within this zone and your left hand can just follow suit. So the second line starts with an F major chord, just stepping down from the G that was at the end of the first line, of course doing that arpeggio. And that's just the same shape as the C and the G were, it's F A C. All white keys. And don't be afraid. So right down to C, just like we did it before. Of the dark, one measure of G, just like we did it. Then we have this G minor. So of course, it's just one measure, two times up and down the pattern. And we took that B and made it a B flat. It's a nice chord change there. Next line, we've got a D minor. Once again, all white keys, D, F, A, with the high octave there. At the end of a storm. So we're going all the way up here to a B flat. Like I said, that's the highest chord we're gonna have. And it's B flat, D, and F here with that high B flat octave. And then two chords here that we've already done. There's a golden sky and the... Okay, in this line, we have a couple of measures here where there are two chords crammed in to the same measure. So here we've got a B flat chord, just like we did it, down to an A minor chord, all white keys, A, C, E. And the measure is divided in half, so it's going to be just one time up and down the arpeggio for each one, or if you're thinking with the 6 8 pulse, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we've got a G minor, just like we did it, F, just like we did it. And the sweet silver song. Of a lark. So here we have this E major chord. That's going to be E, G sharp, B with the high E. And that's a full measure. So two times up and down the pattern. And then finally, as the final chord here, we have this C7. So this is the first time the arpeggio is going to deviate a little bit. Here's what I hear. So it's a C7 chord, which has a B flat in it. You can just go up with your first four fingers. One, two, three, four. And then with that flexible wrist we've been talking about, cross your thumb under to C, E. So we're kind of starting a new octave of C arpeggio there. Then you're gonna leap up to the octave, skipping that G there. And once you do that, you're gonna finish up the remaining counts of the measure by just going down the top notes of that arpeggio. C, G, E, C, G, E, it does that twice. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I wanna say you could totally skip that B flat and just do C, E, G, C, E, G, and coming down, that might be a little easier. I'm gonna use the B flat though. All right, I'm gonna keep cruising along. We're gonna learn the pre-chorus, then the chorus. And don't worry, I am gonna play a full cover at the end so you can see how everything we're talking about fits together. But there's a couple of things I wanna mention real quick before we get to the next section. You might find as you're learning this song that you're getting the hang of the arpeggio, but then every time you have a chord change, there's this silence and this awkward finding the next chord. So a couple of things. First, the sustain pedal is gonna be really key in this song. It really smooths that arpeggio out. But it also gives you the grace period to find the next chord shape while we're still hearing the previous one. You just have to do a little lift when you get to the next chord. Lift, like that. So practice that. Also, practice it really slow. If you're finding there's this awkward pause, slow it down so much that that awkward pause as you find the next chord still feels on beat and then you can gradually speed it up. It also helps to really think ahead if I'm on C and I'm about to go to G to kind of have my eye on the target of these G's where we're gonna move and just kind of go for it like that. Okay, so the next section is the pre-chorus. Here it is, it's just two lines. It starts on F. Walk on through the wind 
things. So this chord is cool. It's an A flat diminished triad. We've got an A flat, B, and D, and then the high A flat octave just for one measure. When... Then we're going to go back to C. You might be tempted to go up here, but it goes down there. Like I was saying before, walk on through the rain. So F minor, just like the F we were doing before, but flatting that A. Rain. Back to C. Though your dreams be tossed. So first time we've had an E minor, but it's just another one of those white key chords. E, G, B, tossed. So just one measure on that, and then a measure of F, and blown, stepping up to a measure of G. And that just leads us into the chorus. So one more thing I want to mention is the left hand rhythm. The way I've been doing it, just holding it sounds good. If you want it to have a little more energy, you can do it twice per measure. So each time the arpeggio pattern starts. The bass on the recording is doing a cool rhythm though. It's actually doing this kind of more complicated bass line that sounds like. But that is really hard to do with the right hand piano, especially if singing. So I'm not gonna be worrying about that, but we can capture some of that rhythm by doing something like this. So if we're counting in that faster 6-8 feel, we're not just going to play on count one, we're going to play on count six as well before the arpeggio pattern starts over. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like doing it every other time, so then we would do it. So. From here on out, I'm gonna play the left hand like that. All right, let's do the chorus. Here's that. There are a number of chords here that appear for the first time. It starts out with a measure of C, as we've been doing it. Then we've got this C augmented. So that's the same as a C major chord, but with a sharped fifth. So we're gonna have the G sharp in there. Then we've got an F major, just like we've had it down to D major. So just like the D minor we were doing, but this time the F is sharp. So of course that's gonna be walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never Okay, so this part's really cool. Once again, we have two chords crammed into the same measure. So it's just one, two, three, four, five, six on the C before starting another arpeggio round with the C augmented over E. So C augmented just like we did it a second ago, but the bass note is changing to E. C augmented over E. Never. So this is so cool. The F just as we are doing it, but again, two chords in the same measure. So just once up and down the F and then every single one of those notes gets sharped up to an F sharp major chord. F sharp, A sharp, C sharp with the F sharp octave. Alone. So then we've got the E minor and we've got a full measure of that. So two times through the pattern up to G. Now, we kind of start this next line the same with the You'll never walk But this time instead of going to the F sharp, it just steps up to the G Alone So just one measure of C, full measure of G Cool so after that, we've got the final chorus. It looks like this. So the same thing, except for the last line, the final line of the song is a little bit different. The first two measures of this final line is the one spot in the song where it's not the arpeggio. You're just gonna hit the chord. And so for this C, you'll never walk up to F. So you kind of hit that C and then let it be silent. And the length of the measure is the same as it would be, but you just kind of sing in that space. 
ever walk up to F again just blocking it out F A C then for this G7 chord we're gonna keep our right hand thumb on F but these fingers are gonna step up and we're gonna essentially with these three fingers play a G major chord but we're keeping that F there and of course the left hand is gonna go up to a G bass note so you never walk alone so just on that second to last measure there the F we just return to the arpeggio pattern so tw twice up and down Last measure of the song. So we're going to start this arpeggio two octaves higher than middle C. Just go top, down, down. And then when you get to this treble C here, you're going to cross your third finger. Again, just keep that loose wrist and finish. So just all the notes of the C major chord in, t in two octaves. And the song is over. Okay, thank you for watching. I am now going to do a full cover. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel if you are not already and click the bell so you know when I put out more videos like this one. Okay, here's my version of You'll Never Walk Alone. When you walk through a storm, hold your Walk on.